Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the partial sums of a Fourier series of a 2 pi periodic function defined between negative pi and pi. So given a 2 pi periodic function, and we have to also assume that's integrable function defined on negative pi to pi, Okay, and of course those points have to be identified by periodicity, right? Or you can make one open and one close and sort of define it in a sort of a strange way if you like to. Given a 2 pi periodic function, we have, we formally have f of theta is formally, right, this symbol, because we don't know if this series is going to converge or not, n and z f hat of n e to the i n theta, because this collection e to the i n theta, where theta, where n is in z, is an orthonormal set, right? And here, of course, f hat of n is 1 over 2 pi, integral from negative pi to pi, f of theta, e to the negative i n theta d theta. This is the nth Fourier coefficient, nth Fourier coefficient. Okay. Now, of course, if we were in a regular inner product space, let me recall a basic fact from linear algebra. So recall, if phi1 through phi n is an orthonor is an orthogonal, orthonormal, and now I'm going to say basis for a vector space V, then we can say what? Then we can say that any vector in my vector space is just the sum j goes from 1 to n of v, the inner product of v, with these vectors phi j in the direction of phi j, right? And of course, these things really over here, these are really like my, these are really like my Fourier coefficients over here. Of course, since this is a finite basis, the finite means that this sum is going to converge no matter what. Now my basis is infinite. I'm summing over all of z. There's a countable number of these things in the basis. So I don't know if this will converge or not. So we have to formulate a notion of convergence. That's where partial sums, come, partial sums come in to help us. So the partial sums, the nth partial sum, so s n f of theta, is what? Is the sum j goes from negative n to n of f hat of j e to the i j theta. This is the nth partial sum. Nth partial sum. Okay? Now I can ask the question, in what sense does this partial sum converge? So question, in what sense does the limit as n tends to infinity of s n f of theta equal f of theta, if it equals that at all, okay? And so the answer depends on how smooth the function is. If, for example, the function is twice continuously differentiable, has two continuous derivatives, or even just one continuous derivative, then this expression is here is true pointwise. However, if f is just continuous, this may not be true. This may not be true. If f is just continuous. In other words, there are continuous function, functions that are continuous at a point, and actually more generally continuous at a dense set, continuous at a point whose Fourier series does not converge to the function value at that point. So continuous functions in the Fourier series are ill-behaved together. I need more regularity in the function to say something like this. We can say in further videos that there's a mean convergence to this. In other words, what is true is it's true that if I look at the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f of theta minus s n f of theta quantity squared d theta, this limit will be equal to zero. And this is called mean squared convergence. We'll prove this in a different video, mean squared convergence. So there are certain types of convergence that the Fourier series exhibits. And it's actually a theorem of Lenroy Carlson that if I give you an integrable function, a little big integral function, L1 function, then the Fourier series has converged almost everywhere. It's a very, very powerful result in Fourier analysis. Okay. 
All right, excellent. So let's discuss some of these properties over here. So what I want to do is I want to give, give two, two properties of these partial sums over here. So one thing we can trivially know is we can trivially note that S n f of theta is really the sum j goes from negative n up to n of 1 times f hat j of theta e to the negative i j e to the i j theta theta. And why did I write this? Because now I know if I, this is really the, I can write this as a convolution. This is a convolution of a function whose Fourier coefficients are uh, one at all points. So in other words, what this is, is this is a convolution dn of theta. Because we'll remember what this Dirichlet kernel is here. So dn, of course, is the Dirichlet kernel. So dn is the Dirichlet kernel. Okay. Because remember what, what the properties are. If I look at the Fourier coefficients of this thing over here, what are the Fourier coefficients of this of a convolution? The Fourier coefficients are convolution of the product of the Fourier coefficients. Now, the Dirichlet kernel has coefficients of 1 between negative, negative n and n, right? So in other words, since dn of theta is just the sum j goes from negative n to n of just e to the i j theta, which we also know is what? Which we also know is the sine of n plus 1 half theta over the sine of theta over 2. So we know that's what the Dirichlet kernel looks like. And so now the question becomes is, how can I analyze, how can I use this fact that it has a convolution with the Dirichlet kernel to help me out over here? Now one sort of unfortunate thing about the Dirichlet kernel is that you can show that this Dirichlet kernel is not integrable as n goes to infinity because this Dirichlet kernel grows like a logarithm. In other words, we can show that the L1 norm, and we'll show this in a further video, the L1 norm of this Dirichlet kernel is bigger than or equal to constant times the natural log of n. So in other words, there's not a uniform integrability as n goes to infinity, so this is going to prevent me from using some ability methods and other things. What we'll see in further videos, so in other words, what we've done over here is we've relayed the partial sums of the partial Fourier series of a function to the convolution with the Dirichlet kernel, and then we're going to make use of the fact that this, we're going to use in further videos show this Dirichlet kernel is not uniformly integrable, and what that will allow me to do is that it says I need to pass to other summability methods to compute convergence results or pass to a different mean of convergence to get convergence results. Thank you very much.